Uh. Hi, thanks. Um, yeah, my name is uh, Steve Tyler. Um, I'm a part-time developer. I've been learning uh, front-end development uh, last um, few years. Um, I work as a, um, a small business IT um, consultant. Um, so for the last few years, I've just been um, learning yeah, front-end development, just doing websites for friends. Speak up. Hello. Sorry. Can I tell you something? No, it's just recording. You'll just have to check. Okay, sorry. Sorry. Um, where was I? Right, yeah, sorry. Yeah, so I've just been, um, last few years, I've just been doing websites for friends and local small businesses. Um, and then about, about a year ago, I kind of lost my way a bit. wasn't quite sure what direction to go in. Um, and then I got, uh, got an email one day from one of these online learning sites that I signed up to, uh, a site called Talent Buddy, basically saying that they've got a new course. It's a full stack course. Um, using the latest technologies, um, we get to build a basic version of Twitter. Um, so I thought it sounded like a great, great experience for me. Um, it was quite a big leap from what I'd, my then experience at the time. Um, but really glad I did it, and it's been a really good experience. Um, so just going to run through what the app does. Quickly. Sorry. There we go. Yeah. Right, so... Um, I'm going to say that all right? Yeah, OK. Right, so just, just a basic version of Twitter. So we just log in here. I'll just log in as me. And we just get a, a list of few posts here. I've just recreated some of my Twitter favorites within here. Um, and then you can just create a new post at the top. So I'm just. Oh, oh, sorry. Um, publish a new post and, and then and then I can just just delete that um, you can go onto other people's pages so I'm just going to my own page and it just shows you posts um, who I'm following and who follows me um, right, so I just log out of there um, <coughs> right so so for me on the, on, on the course so um, when I was first introduced to Ember, um, I, I was told to kind of go to Ember Guides. Um, for me personally, um, now that I've got a bit more experience, um, Ember Guides is great, it's a really good, good reference. But when I was first starting, it was quite a lot to take in and I was quite overwhelmed. Um, um, so um, one, one thing I, kind of, I think is, is um, kind of missing for this is, a, is an actual diagram. Um, so. This is, a, this is a diagram that's been used, I've seen in, in other talks. Um, it's where, so Ember uses his own version of the MVC pattern, where, um, um, where you have um, um, models of your data, um, and, sorry, uh, uh, it's a way of uh, separating your concerns. So the way that you separate, we all know to separate our HTML from our CSS, from our JavaScript. Um, here we're separating our models, our data, from our views, what's running to the screen, um, we, um, and then from our the controllers, which are like the middleman between between the two. Ember um, is kind of based around the router, um, so it's kind of it, it uses like the flexibility of URLs, where you can bookmark URLs and, and share them. Um, <coughs> so, um, in, it, so it's a generates a URL per route. So if we go back to my app again, you'll see here that when I, um, if I go see on the sign up page, you get a create account route so that I can use the back button and, and go back. Um, so and, and some other apps don't, um, don't always work like that. So you may end up going to your, the previous website that you were on. Um, so, right. Um, and, and in the router, you, that, that's where you load your models, your data. And because you have to start with, because um, you have to uh, define your routes in the beginning, it, it makes you think about the structure of your app first. It's a good way of, good way of working. <coughs> so um, I was still, still quite, quite a lot to take in. So um, after a few weeks, I was still a bit 
I'm confused. So I just said to my tutor, can we start from scratch, with, well, start with basics in Ember? So um, he said about, um, so he came up with some exercises for me in JS bin, um, which people don't know, it's a really good sort of testing environment. Um, so we, we just did some, some very basic um, um, examples. So um, in, in Ember, your, your base class is ember.object, which all your objects inherit from, uh, and you use object.create to instantiate that, that class. Um, so very sort of simple things we did. Um, just create like a, like a data object here, um, first name and last name, um, create a new um, Ember object. Um, Ember uses um, here, I've, um, when you went to the went to the template here, um, I've, in, in this case we use handlebars, but I, and I know the, the latest version of Ember from version 11, it's actually HTML bars. Um, so here, so you render a template, give it a context, which was my previous, op previous, previous data object. Um, the view, you can then append to a, a class in, your, in, the, in, in the DOM. Um, and that, in, this, in this very simple case, it's just how it just outputs Pi M London. Um, and that, that's the output in, in uh, JS Bing. Um, I've since found out that um, there's actually ember.js bin now. So that's, that looks really good. So, so, I to, so, it's, so it's worth um, trying that out as well. Um, right, so, uh, so after that, 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 that's when it kind of started to sort of sink in for me. Um, so then, then we had to go on to actually create a new Ember project. So um, we use um, Ember CLI, um, which is a, a command line interface, which you can just run from your terminal or, or when you're on your virtual machine. I use a Ubuntu um, virtual, uh, virtual box. Um, so the benefit to this is it, it gives you a, a good project structure from the beginning. Um, it uses um, ASX transpilation, so you can use new features um, now before they're available in, 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 in browsers. <coughs> um, a lot of, um, you have a lot of dependencies, so um, to, to manage those you use bower and, and npm, so you just have a bower.json file and a um, package.json file, which keeps a list of all your dependencies. Um, again, because there's so many um, dependencies, you need, when you, when you compile all, the, all these um, pile of all your assets, it, it, it needs to be fast. So I know with, uh, with um, Grunt, Grunt Watch will watch an individual file. <coughs> uh, in this case, when, when you might have hundreds of different files, um, you, you need a fast process. Broccoli, so it uses, um, uh, rather than individual files, it uses trees, directories of files instead. So it's a lot, it's a lot, a lot quicker. Um, gives you mock um, server, to, so you can simulate your network requests. Um, live reload is basically so when you when you make a change to any of your files, it automatically builds or builds all your assets and updates your browser in the screen. So um, now we also have um, I don't think it was available and when I wouldn't start using it, I think I was using the beta version. I don't think it was available then. But um, but but now we have Generators, so you can so that there is some boilerplate code when you're when you're defining routes and um, controllers. So um, you you can just type in Ember generate um, root Telegram in my in, in my in my example. <coughs> so um, to create a new project, you need to install Ember CLI first. Obviously, so just npm install uh, globally with a um, global switch, um, and then you just type in ember new and then the project name, so Telegram or whatever you want to call it. Um, if you have an existing file, you can just run ember in it within that within that folder. Um, so that generates that's my um, folder structure. So quite a lot of quite a lot of stuff there, but you um, generally you'll just be looking in the app app folder there. Um, so again, it gives you a good um, 
the structure to know where, where to place all your, all your files. Right, so if you go back to NAP again, so... So I had to, um, so from the beginning, so we need to think about what routes I wanted to create. So from here, um, so we have um, one route here for our login page. We have, we have another one here for sign up. Um, another one for reset password, that's three. And, uh, and another one once you've reset the password and just says that confirm that you've reset your password. Um, so that's four on this on this route. So um, so if we look at the actual router, so the parent route, as it were, is called a resource. So that, that that's effectively that, that's a namespace effectively. So um, then then within that we have the stop route, just login um, with the optional parameter. If you want to change the, the name of the of the path here, so we, I've just changed it to the index route there. Um, so we have four routes within that resource. Um, and also on, on the next page, on a user page, you'll we'll have a user post page, a user following and the followers. Um, so that's another resource for the user page. Um, right, so you, so you get so the objects that are created from the, from the router, uh, in this case will just be so, so the resource will create Telegram root, Telegram controller, Telegram view. Um, and then for the, the routes will be Telegram login routes, Telegram login controller, etc. <coughs> so going right, so, so looking at the login page, so th th this is my template, so this is just the form, the, the, the login form. So so here this is this is just a form where we type in our username and password. Um, so we have these input helpers that just take the value of the username and, and password, um, and you, you'll see if um, we, that will then check it on the on the back end on the on the server. And you see that if uh, if the login fails, then it then it will render a, a, a div and an, an alert that you that the, that the password is wrong. So if I just type in. Oh, so log in, so it's rendering that div because the because the password. So on the controller for the um, for the login route, this is where we're checking if the username and password are correct. So it's we do so we're doing a, a, a find on the store, looking for the user. Um, if the passwords match, then we have this controller dot transition to root um, path here. So that um, so if, if if the username and password are correct, then it transitions to the root my stream. If not, it sets the login fail property to true, which is why that that alert was um, rendered just now. Um, right. So so now. If we log in, so, right. so we log in normally now. So now that we're on this page, so, so now we need to load some data in, um, because we need to load load, load the post data in. So. <coughs> so for that, we use Ember Data which is a library that manages your models. So it manages that within the, within the browser. Um, so it keeps the store within the browser, so, so it's a lot quicker. And that saves us having to use lots of uh, extra code. So in the past, we may use um, Ajax calls to load in JSON objects. Um, so so in, in my case, the, the, the two models are very simple, just users and posts. Um, so this is my just just my user model. Um, so we, we define the attributes here. Um, mostly it's just going to be strings, 
Um, apart from obviously it is followed will just be true or false. Um, and in, in post, so we have um, user property here, which because it's um, effective, that, that's the author of the post. So that, that creates a one-to-one -one, um, relationship between the post and the, so that's one-to-one -one relationship between the, between the two models, the post and the user model. <coughs> Right, so in so in in the root now for that that my stream root, um, so we return so um, so if you use this dot store dot filter um, and you filter it for posts, um, the operation that that's a back end operation, so that's that's run on on the server, um, and that will return all all my posts and the posts of people that I'm following. Um, store dot filter. Um, returns a live um, array so that if you, if you were to add um, posts, so if I was to create a new post or delete a post, it keeps that array up to date. Um, right, so, so in here, I don't know if you noticed, but when I work, so if I type a, type a post again, Sorry, yeah. Um, how do I? Is it, is it yeah. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah, okay. Right, so you'll see as I, as I type in, there's a character counter underneath, just, just like in Twitter. Um, also, and also the um, date here, well it's a few days ago, but, but, but this keeps up to date. So, um, so in, in Ember what we can use to, to do that is um, computed properties. So um, the way I think of computed properties is like um, Excel um, cells. So if you've got like a formula in a cell, um, say for calculating VAT or something, I don't know. Um, so, but that is um, dependent on another cell. Um, so it's a yes. Yeah, so it's a, it's a property that is derived from another property, um, and they, they do this by extending the function prototype. Okay. So so this is my again on my controller. Um, so new post. That's just the value of the text area. So obviously that will be em just just empty to start off with, um, and so the so the character count computed property is just is dependent on the value of new post or the length of that value um, and so you define the, the, the computed property by saying dot property at the end and you put in the two the, the two properties new post and and max length okay um, right um, I just mentioned components. I haven't used components um, too much. I'm starting to kind of m move, um, move from, um, move my post in, into a separate <coughs> post post component. Um, the components allow you to uh, define your own uh, tags, um, HTML tags, um, which make, means you, means you can reuse those anywhere else within your application. Um, so my um, Originally, my post look, looked like this, so I was just um, so the, the HTML was in the um, just within the template. Um, so we have um, a link to helper there, which just links to the um, post route of the user. Um, so now I've, I've I've moved a lot of this code into a separate um, post. Um, component, sorry. Um, and now I can just render it like this. So, um, so you're defining a new component um, post block, I've called it in this case, and it needs to have a hyphen in it. Um, but I, um, yeah, but I'm, I, I, I am on ad adding some more features to this and using more components in, in future, um, adding like a repost, retweet um, component to it. 
um, a bit later on. So um, I think that's about it. Um, yeah, thanks. <coughs> <coughs> Um, well, it's just 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 a lot to take. I mean, I mean um, being, being new to NBC as well was was quite. Um, I, again, do, again, doing doing it sort of individually, like working with controllers first, or then working with with you sort of individually. That's in, in jazz been that, that, that's what really what, what really helped me. Um, um, I suppose having. And the CLI as well gives you, gives you that structure so you, you know exactly where to, where to put things. Um, I'm, still, I'm, I'm obviously still learning, it's still, you know, so um, not being a, um, I can't do it in my sort of spare time, so it is, uh, it is taking a while to kind of something, but, um, but I think I'm, yeah, I'm sort of getting that. So, yeah. Nice. Hi. Had you, um, had you come across them before the Tumble Bunny course? No, no, I've never heard of it before. No, so because um, um, yeah, because I um, they just said using the latest technology. I wasn't sure what what they, <laughs> that, that meant at the time. Um, so uh, yeah, so that's that's good. Um, um, yeah, because I wasn't sure if it was going to be Angular at all or not. But um, I, I think the guys are based in Canada, so I, th I think they know. Yahoo, I think I think they know them for the sort of base in the central area. I think so. Not just why, but I think that's one of the one of the other reasons why they chose them. Hi. Awesome. Hi. Um, that was awesome. Um, oh, thanks. It's all right. <laughs> so I'm a bit nervous. But no, that's, that's cool. Um, so now, now you've got your newfound sort of experience in Ember. What do you sort of see as the future? Is this something you're, you're planning on taking forward to? Yeah, well, to keep going or. Oh, oh, definitely, definitely. Because um, what, 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 what this, I mean, this give me an idea to kind of extend um, this app. Um, I'd like to kind of turn it into like a sort of a organizer. So I've kind of added another feature to it where I can import my own tweets into it. So I, I thought it'd be a nice little project for me just to sort of import data into it and then start filtering it and searching and things like that. Yeah. Uh, so that's what I had to do next, just, just as a little side project. Yeah. You know? So, um, so you just work on this in your own time, basically. Yeah, so my, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm a kind of um, freelancer. Whenever I, I don't have constant work, so whenever yeah. I don't, I'm, I kind of work on not on my own book. It's awesome. I love seeing stuff like this. I mean, every one of us here has been exa in exactly the same position, so that's really cool. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it's awesome. All right. Yeah. Another round of applause. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Thanks. 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 Thanks.